Hey guys, and welcome back to this brand new video. Today I'm going to show you an OBS 30.2.3 update. But I'll actually go over all of the changes that has been happening since OBS 30.2. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. Now to start off here, actually a pretty small change, you might have noticed it, especially I haven't used for OBS in a while, as you can see, there's some differences here in the layout, some new UI changes, you can see here in the audio mixer, and also if you go to settings, we have a new tab here called appearance, as you can see here you can select the theme, but you can also change the style here, but this is of course a preference, this is entirely up to you what you want, this used to be actually in general, but now they actually put a different tab, so now you know it. Then we actually go here to general tab and actually mention something, another small thing here that has changed. As you can see here, of course, for the updates, make sure that this one is selected, stable, latest, stable release. That's on default and then automatically check for updates on startup. If you want it, of course, it's of course highly recommended. So make sure that that one is selected and that also OBS always gives you the latest update. But talking about updates, what I wanted to say, that actually the OBS team actually fixed a problem where the Windows updater or OBS itself said that there was an update available repeatedly, even though that wasn't the case, or even though you already updated it kept showing this message so that's like a small problem you might have come across but that actually has been fixed right now also something different here if i go for example to output and i go into the recording tab now make sure above by the way the output mode is on advanced and basically this is also like a small change but like every information or warning message or even an error message for that matter are now down at the bottom so as you can see here if any warning or whatever kind of messages is shown it's now at the bottom it's more visibly easy so that's also like another small change now then a bigger change right here if i go to recording format as you can see right here there's actually something new called hybrid mp4 which is still in beta at the time of this recording but basically basically it's more an advanced option than mp4 because mp4 alone is not advised if there's anything that happens with your recording for example your, your pc goes out or anything else like that the file corrupts mp4 will not be recoverable so you will not be able to get back that recording so especially if you don't like hours of recording for for example a gameplay you wouldn't get that back but hybrid mp4 actually has a small remux function now remux i've talked about this in a previous video that's actually what i've done with mkv i record an mkv but then at the end it automatically remixes converts and makes a different video file that is mp4 so no matter what point the recording cuts off it actually is recorded up until that point and so hybrid mp4 is actually also fragmented better said you can actually add chapter markers right now i can show you this right here in hotkeys as you can see here and you can see add chapter marker hybrid mp4 only as you can see is this one right here you can actually add like a hotkey so something you want to use on your keyboard that actually Make sure that adds a chapter marker, so this adds a marker in the recording. And this is actually visible in most software that you use to do video editing. So this is of course also useful for streamers, which want of course to mark key moments in their recordings. And so if they video edit their videos themselves, or they have somebody to do that, it will be actually way easier to distinguish and to actually pick apart some points, some essential points in the recordings. And this actually also works with one of the video editing software that I use, which is DaVinci Resolve. I actually have a video up here in the right corner if you want, if you know nothing about it. It's very nice is free software and actually is a very complete one for something that is free now i've also heard about the potential hybrid mov that will come later but that's for now just speculation if that's going to do another hybrid mov or even another hybrid form like mkv something anything else but that's not sure we can only see in the future if they're going to do that for any other recording format now if i go back here just wanted to mention some other small things that have been fixed like for example sometimes the audio of multiple instances of a source in a scene is now actually not duplicated from the source anymore so basically the audio sometimes was duplicated this is actually more of a problem that's specifically run into if you have multiple sources of course which is right here of course you add the scene first and then you add the sources right here in case you didn't know that you do add and then you add a certain scene and if you add multiple ones if you, for example an image the recording itself now also in case you are running into this they also fixed a possible scene loading problem now actually something they have added talking about streaming it's multi-track streaming now this is actually at the moment only on windows now, what you basically can do is you can manage multiple video and audio tracks at the same time which in a way was already possible but now for twitch it's going to be even more easier and actually on twitch it's already something called enhanced broadcasting so this is going to make it in the future even more simpler for streamers to actually basically take control over their multiple video and audio tracks also something else to mention they prioritized nvdec so nvdec decoder on nvidia system so in case you're using nvidia for example your nvidia graphics card that's something nice to know and for mac users the default recording format is set to fragmented mov but this is something of course you can 
can always change if you want. And then in case you're using Linux, there's also actually some changes. There's actually generally some new features that were already available on Windows, but that are now available in Linux as well. Like for example, the NVENC, so the NVENC. Encoder now supports EV1. And there's also something that they call texture support that has now been added to the NVENC. And also QuickSync to actually better the quality for us once again, the Linux users. So actually they made the encoders actually even better than before. And as I said, and they're actually finally catching up with what the Windows users has been having for years now. And, and actually the new beta version of the hybrid MP4 is actually available as well in Linux and Mac, obviously. But anyways, I basically just wanted to talk about some new features here, also some changes and some fixes. Something I wanted to quickly mention. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Subscribe would also be really nice. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.